And we begin this afternoon with the University of Michigan Police ending the encampment at the Diag. Thank you for joining us. I'm Glenda Lewis. Video posted to social media shows police using what appears to be pepper spray or tear gas on the protesters, forcing them to retreat. The officers moved in to break down the camp just before 6 a.m. this morning. Chopper 7 was over U of M as protesters were told it was time to pack up and head home. But four people landed up in Washtenaw County Jail instead. The tent encampment went up April 22nd. Police started with a hands-off approach, but when the protest was deemed disruptive, school officials say demonstrators were repeatedly asked to leave. So fast forward to May 17th, and a fire safety inspection failed, all leading up to today when police arrived just before 6 a.m. We do have team coverage following the major developments at U of M. We're going to begin with 7 News Detroit reporter Darren Cunningham live in Ann Arbor with what's happening now. Darren. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Glenda. Right now, as you can see, everything is back to normal here on the Diag, a scene we have not seen in about a month. As you mentioned there, university police tell me this morning officers issued three verbal warnings over a 15 minute period for people to leave before pepper spraying demonstrators and making arrests. University grounds crews power washed the Diag from morning until early afternoon, cleaning up remnants left by pro-Palestinian protesters and their encampment. <laughs> University police say about 50 people were in the encampment just before 6 a.m. when they were asked to leave several times or risk getting arrested. I think it was handled not in the best way. Um, it was kind of done at a sneaky hour. A number of people told us the timing felt sneaky. We spoke to several who came to the perimeter of the Diag either out of curiosity or because they didn't realize they couldn't pass through. Uh, I think it's a shame. I think uh, students have the right to protest uh, on campus and their safety shouldn't be like a concern. They shouldn't have to fear getting arrested or pepper sprayed. Um, I supported what those guys were doing. In a statement to 7 News Detroit, university administration said it recognizes the importance of free speech, but they have a duty to protect all who use the campus. The administration says the clearing of the encampment was sparked by the refusal of occupants to remove fire hazards. On May 17th, we're told an inspection by the university fire marshal determined a fire would likely lead to, quote, a catastrophic loss of life. Because of the refusal, the university removed the encampment. One of my kids is at another university where the university actually negotiated and is willing to actually take a vote on divestment issues in the fall, um, so that's Brown. And so I know that there are a wide range of things that universities can do, and it's the lack of creativity that goes into the way they've handled it here is just mind boggling. I never felt unsafe around it, being a student here, having to walk past it every day. And, you know, it just seems like it was a bit of an overreaction. And especially all this with the not letting anyone get within like 300 feet of the where it was, it's kind of ridiculous. Right around 1.15 this afternoon, university police reopened the Diag, removing the caution tape. Two questions. One, did the problem get fixed? And if the problem did get fixed, then why are you kicking them out? Two, why are you pepper spraying and telling you just it's a it's a forceful move, dude. You know what I mean? They're just trying to kick people off because they're trying to make business continue. That's it. It's just it's a money move. Where to from here? I mean, I think it's sad that the university didn't want to have conversations with people. I personally wouldn't be surprised if something else popped up. All right, I stopped a considerable number of people. Only those sympathetic to the encampment offered an opinion. I uh, reached out to the University uh, Public Affairs, as I previously mentioned. I also asked if I could speak with the president, if I'll be able to interview him. However, I was told he is not available. But the university's statement went on to say, quote, the disregard for safety directives was the latest in a series of troubling events centered on the encampment, end quote, and that protests are welcome as long as they don't endanger the community, disrupt university operations, or violate the law. Live in Ann Arbor, Darren Cunningham, 7 News Detroit. All right, Darren, thank you. We do have our team coverage continuing at the Washtenaw County Jail where demonstrators were released from custody just hours ago. A total of four protesters were arrested by police this morning. Several different charges. Seven News Detroit reporter Brett Cast is hearing from people who were arrested. 
Well, it was a pretty large crowd gathered here outside the Washtenaw County Jail where those four arrested protesters were being held. And once they finally got released around 1.30, the crowd erupted in cheers. A roaring welcome as four protesters released from custody more than seven hours after police began clearing the month-long encampment at the University of Michigan Dyack. Free Palestine. Get our money off of the Middle East. Hands off the Middle East. Assad was one of those protesters arrested. He says he's a 26-year-old graduate of U of M from Dearborn Heights, uncertain what charges he's now facing. It's far more important to center the people in Palestine right now than to center any of this nonsense. Shortly after the encampment was cleared, the protest moved to the Washtenaw County Jail. There, the group continued what they had been doing at the Diag, playing drums and dancing, gathering on the lawn to listen to speakers, some seeking shade around the building, bringing food and water ready for the long haul. I had pepper spray all over me in my eyes since 6 a.m. I just got washed up just now. Rhiannon Wilson was also arrested and held in the jail. The grad student and research assistant said she's now facing felony charges for resisting and obstructing a police officer. Honestly, it's just pretty shocking as a student, an employee of the university, doing what I understand to be a protected First Amendment activity for what I believe in. Willow camped for nearly 30 days and says she was told she's now banned from campus. With the encampment now clear, those protesting outside the jail and those held inside vow to keep their fight going. This is why we stand up. When people are under attack, when there is injustice, you stand up and fight back. And the group says three protesters were privately taken to the hospital, but most have since been released. In Ann Arbor, I'm Brett Cast, 7 News, Detroit. All right, Brett, thank you.